Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Vanessa and today we are going to be talking about the sign of the cross. Now the sign of the cross is this thing that you probably see your crazy Catholic friends doing all the time, especially me actually. I do it for everything. I hear a siren on the road, I see an airplane, I pass a church, I pass a cemetery, I think of my grandparents, I think of my parents, and sometimes I even accidentally do it to ice cream trucks because when I hear loud noises I automatically think that they're sirens. So. I always, I'm always doing the sign of the cross. But if you're not familiar with what the sign of the cross is, it's this prayer, um, begin, this beginning prayer that Catholics do. They do it before mass, they do it after mass, they do it before they pray, they do it when they're done praying. And this is what it looks like. Um, mind you, because the camera's gonna be reversed, this is gonna be slightly reversed. So what's gonna be on my right side may be on your left side, and what's gonna be on my left side may be on your right. So just bear with me while I try explaining this all to you today. So the sign of the cross looks like this, in the name of the Father, and and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So that is a simple prayer that begins a larger prayer. Usually you do it before Mass, you do it before you pray. Sometimes people just use that as a quick little prayer before they eat, which is me because I get like very hungry and I get impatient. But let's talk about the history and where did the sign of the cross come from? How old is it? Um, how do I even explain the sign of the cross? So let's get started. All right, so let's talk about like the importance of the sign of the cross and what it means. So as I said at the beginning, it's in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, which is the Holy Trinity. So it's a way of outward showing um, the symbol of Jesus dying on the cross, the significance of the Holy Trinity, and our salvation by making a cross representing Jesus dying on the cross for us. So what we could believe from scholars, papers, and letters that this sign of the cross thing was not that uncommon. Actually in 200 AD, it actually was very common. So I'm pretty sure a lot of us know about Tertullian if you study scholars, but if you don't, this was a theologian and a scholar during like the 200 time AD. And I talked about him in my video about the sacraments and he comes up a lot and a lot when we talk about early church writings. So Tertullian said that the sign of the cross actually was something really, really common. He even says, in all of our travels and moments, and all our coming and going out, and putting on our shoes at the bath, at the table, and lighting our candles, and lying down, and sitting down, whatever employment occupies us, we mark our foreheads with the sign of the cross. We can find this in his writing in the De Corona, um, which was probably dated around the time 201. Another work that we can look at or another writing that we can see is from St. Cyril of Jerusalem. And this is another one of those scholars and saints that you hear a lot, especially if you're researching the Catholic faith. But in his cataclysmical lectures, he wrote about the sign of the cross and why we should do it and not be ashamed of it. So he says, Let us therefore not be ashamed of the cross of Christ, but though another hide it, do thou openly seal it upon thy forehead, that the devils may behold the royal sign and flee trembling far away. Make then the sign at eating and drinking, at sitting, at lying down, at rising up, at speaking, at walking, in a word, at every act. For he who has here crucified is in heaven above. You can find this in the Catholic Cothical Lectures under 14. So we can see here that even St. Cyril of Jerusalem said, do this, don't be ashamed. Do this, do this at every action, when you're sitting, when you're walking, when you're eating, when you're sleeping, do this. Do not be ashamed of showing that you believe in God and you believe in the Trinity and you understand that he died for you on that cross. So the sign of the cross is nothing to be ashamed of. It's something to rejoice in, it's a symbol, it's an outward sign that we accept God as our savior and we're not afraid of showing it. Now we must actually understand the importance of showing that we believe in the Trinity because in the fourth century there was a council at Chalmston and they were trying to say that there wasn't a God on the there's a difference between the God on earth and the God in heaven. They tried saying he's 50% divine and 50% human and that there's two different ones and he's not a part of the Trinity and because of this it is so important that we often reiterate we often say over and over again that we believe in the Holy Trinity and this is basically in the fourth century at this council it became extremely important for people to not deny God not deny the Trinity but show it in an outward way. Here's an interesting fact. Unfortunately this is only really exercised by the people in the Eastern Rite. It's still something that is extremely significant and people were doing for a decent amount of time. The way they would hold their hands would actually represent the Trinity. So here's a photo because I can't figure out how to do it myself. But basically the way you hold your hands represents these letters IXC which is the Greek abbreviation for Christus 
Soter, which means Jesus Christ, Savior. So although the Eastern Rite has their own way of doing the sign of the cross, it was changed in the 12th century by Pope Innocent III. He was Pope from 1198 to 1216, and he said, the sign of the cross is made with three fingers because the sign is done together with the invocation of the Trinity. This is how it is done, from the above to the below, to the right, to the left, because Christ descends from the heavens to the earth, from the Jews, to the Gentiles. Others, however, make the sign of the cross from the left to the right because the misery we must come across to our glory. Just as Christ crossed over from death to life and from Hades to paradise, some priests do it this way so that they and the people will be signing themselves in the same way. You can easily verify this. Picture the priest facing the people for the blessing. When we make the sign of the cross over the people is from left to right. So, um, this is like in the history of the Mass, but basically the, when the Masses used to go on back in the day, the priest and the people would all be facing the same way at the altar. But because they think that it'd be better if the teacher was facing the students, that the priest turned around. So that's why it kind of got changed during that time of which way we make the sign of the cross, because the priest was doing it the same way when they were all facing the same way, but it changed when the priest was facing the people. But that is the only major significance. But either way, regardless of the change, and the way we hold our hands and the way we do it. This is an outward sign of the Trinity, of the understanding that Jesus died for our sins. The sign of the cross should not be something that people should be ashamed of or really question or be irritated by because I have people who are extremely irritated by the fact that I do the sign of the cross and I can not understand because it's biblical. I'm talking about the Trinity. I'm showing that Jesus Christ died on the cross and I am remembering this every single day, every single meal. Now, you may be wondering, okay, this is cool. It's in church writings. People in the church believe it, but is it in the Bible? It is. Um, we can find this in Revelation 7, 2 through 4. It says, um, this is when John witnesses four angels on the four corners of the earth. It is written, Then I saw another angel coming up from the west, having the seal of the living God. He called out in a loud voice to the four angels who had been who had given him power to harm the land and the sea. Do not harm the land and the sea or the trees until we set a seal on the foreheads of the servants of God. Then I hear the number of those who are sealed, 144,000 from all the tribes of Israel. So he talks about the seal on the foreheads. We could also see this in Revelation 14.1. It says, Then I looked, and there before me was the Lamb, standing on Mount Zion, and with him a hundred hundred and forty four thousand who had his name and his father's name written on their foreheads so we see this in revelations that they even wrote about the sealing of god's name the sealing of the cross the sealing of something on their foreheads to prove that they are people with god we can also see this in Revelations 22, 4, where they say they will see his face and his name will be on their foreheads. Another one where they say his name on the foreheads. But, okay, Revelations, all right, that's at the end of the Bible. What about in the middle of the New Testament? Well, actually, it is in 2 Corinthians 1.22. It says, Set his seal of ownership on us and put his spirit in our hearts as a deposit, guaranteeing what is to come. We can also see this word sealed in Ephesians 1.13 and 4.30. Now, the last three verses that I just mentioned, 2 Corinthians 1.22, Ephesians 1.13, and Ephesians 4.30 all actually have, like, a great significance. The significance about these three verses is that the word sealed in these verses are the same word seal in Revelations 7.30. In Revelations 7, sorry, 7.3, it says, Do not harm the land or the sea or the trees until we put a seal on the foreheads of the servants of our God. Now, the word sealed in all of these four verses is from the Greek word spargizo, which means to mark with the seal, which can add security from Satan, which means to mark a person or a thing, to set a mark upon by the impress or a seal of a stamp, and angels are said to be sealed by God. So these four verses all talk about being a security from Satan and be healed and saved by God like how angels are. All right, so let's talk about like maybe how the sign of the cross is supposed to look because obviously we know we have to be sealed with something. So where has this like idea of the cross came from? Well, scholars have actually made a connection between something from the Old Testament and something from the New Testament. So they connect Revelation 7, 3, which was the verse I just gave you, and Ezekiel 9, 4, which says, God says to them, 
Go throughout the city of Jerusalem and put the mark on the foreheads of those who grieve and lament over all the detestable things that are done in it. So commentators such as St. Jerome, which is one of my favorite saints, and I talked about him in my book, I mean, I talked about him in my video about the books, is that he came up with this idea, um, understanding that the Hebrew word for mark is ta. Now, what's interesting about the Hebrew language as it is in the English language is that when we have a letter, I know you think that B is spelled, um, quote unquote, just the letter B. But if you were actually to spell out the letter B, it's B-E-E. -E. Same thing with the letter Z, Z-E-E. -E. So the thing about the Hebrew language is that the last letter of the alphabet is this letter Ta, which is the letter for um, that is in the shape of a T and it's spelled T-A-V. So and it actually looks like a cross. So in Ezekiel 9, 4, when God says to go throughout the city of Jerusalem and put the mark on the foreheads of those who grieve and lament over all the detestable things that are done in it, the word mark is literally what we're supposed to be marking our foreheads with. The sign of the cross is such a simple thing, but such a complex thing to fully and truly understand where it came from. There's a lot of stuff that I probably left out because there's constant research, just constant information coming into light about these things. But the Son of the Cross was something that was believed early, early on. It's biblical. Tertullian talked about it. St. Jerome talks about it. St. Augustine talks about it. All these wonderful and these scholar people, these theologians talk about it. It's in the Bible. So therefore, go ahead, make the Son of the Cross. Don't be ashamed because someone looks at you weird and wondering why you're doing that at the ice cream truck by accident. Be proud because God gave us this mark. God gave us this seal to mark on ourselves. So guys, please go with in peace. Make sure to pray the Son of the Cross before you enter Mass, before you eat, and when you see an ice cream truck. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. I hope this cleared up that idea, that question for you if you had one, and God bless. Bye-bye.